What we have here is a display board that features some hand-built and hand-painted Warhammer 40k miniatures that people use them during gameplay and they also tell various stories with them because they all have characters and stuff like that. What we have gone and done is use augmented reality to enable people to show beyond just what you see here, the deeper layers of meaning that might be in there. So how these things were built, what the characters are, what story this whole diorama is trying to tell. So what we have here is an augmented reality application. After you've viewed the diorama, if you want to find out more about, say for example, this character here, you can just tap on him, read about the character, read what he's done in various games. So this is dynamically collected data from gameplay, how he's done, most memorable moment, for example. It is augmented reality, so basically the content is tied to the, the virtual content is tied to the real world. Uh, you can come in from any angle, view it from anywhere. We've got multiple tablets, so we're going to do it at the same time. Where does that start? I mean, is it recognising the images? What's going Indeed. on? So, uh, augmented reality is all about tying virtual content to the real world. Now, there are a few ways to do this, and bearing, bearing any uh, specialist equipment, what you can do is use optical techniques. So, in this case, we're just using the camera, nothing else. And what it does is it recognises uh, basically a two-dimensional image target. In this case, the stones in front. This is basically just a square image of stones that we've taught the app to recognize. And based on that, in relation to that uh, image, we've placed the virtual content. As you can see, when we get closer to the individual cards, they become more opaque and easier to read. So it's a proximity thing. So basically, we've told the system that compared to, say, above that guy's head, is a piece of information that we can tap on. And everything is in relation to that image. This, of course, has some limitations, but as technology gets better, the same technology can, instead of having to recognize a two-dimensional image, can recognize the objects themselves, assuming you've taught it what they look like. The way it works is while it is looking for a specific target, you don't need to stay locked on to that target while you're viewing the content. This would be the, the default screen before. Now it has acquired a lock. And see here, we are no longer looking at the image target, which is what uh, everything's tied to. But because it is using optical flow, we can go off the target and find something. In fact, we can take the content away, basically, and read it at our leisure. And when we're done, it will inform us that we're off target. And you might have seen the card flew back to where the diorama was. And we just go back, reacquire, get what we want. Say, so read about that guy. So let's say it's really busy in here and uh, we just decide we want to go and sit down on the sofa and keep reading. Is that, is that doable? Yes, it is. <laughs> However, you will have to return to pick up the content of somebody else when you're done. Of course, there is an offline reading capability, which is basically just like reading a book. But there we go, we can grab this. And assuming we unlocked this, this tablet, you can oh, okay, go away and read. It's security, is it? <laughs> Indeed, it's one of those requirements. And there we go, and it'll just fly back to where it came from. Ideally, you'd be able to tie virtual content to anything in real time, so the obviously the sci-fi applications would be, I'm interested in something and I can just have the information pop up above it and I see it on my sci-fi Google glasses or whatever it might be. The trick is having technology that can do that on the fly. We're getting there. It's all based on uh, game engine technology. So uh, Unity engine in this case, then Vuforia, such, uh, which is an augmented reality engine. Those play very nicely together. And then it was a simple matter of uh, putting together the physical component and uh, all the content that was going to be there, tying it up and putting it on display. Quite a few images, so on average we take about 100 images per object. Again, whatever the camera doesn't see, it cannot make a model of, so we try to make sure we get all the hidden parts of the model. Then we throw that into our software and we align the images, so each image needs